So we've had a really informative afternoon. Yeah, we learned a lot of stuff today. And I think we should end it with something a little bit more juicy. So PowerPoint? All right. So I'm here to let you guys all in on a dirty little secret. It's not my secret. It's yours. You're all a bunch of addicts. You helplessly cling to products that are known to cause cancer, birth defects, responsible for excessive amounts of greenhouse gas emissions into the environment every single year, and they also start wars. The really sad thing is, is most of you don't even realize that you have this addiction. This addiction is single-use plastics. So these products are everywhere. It's everything. But they're really rampant in the food industry. So you can imagine the normal suspects, right? You have your uh, carry-out bag, and you have your throwaway utensils, the lid and the straw for your drink, the soda bottle. But really, a lot of these items go into dine-in experiences, too. It's not just takeout. I mean, the plastic salad bowl on Hillsborough Street is everywhere. Oh, so let's have a massive run through. Everywhere. You go on Hillsborough to get a salad. This is what it's coming in, in most places. But then also, you're going to have the ramekin container for your dressing or your ketchup. Uh, but even fine dining, um, you know, this was an $80 meal, and my crackers and my croutons come wrapped and single-use plastics. So we take this one step further. Let's go into the grocery store. I challenge all of you, find a yogurt that comes in anything except plastic. Yeah, you can get the larger container that carries multiple servings. Um, that's going to be recyclable. It's better. Uh, but the single-serving cups are not. That's all trash. But even this larger container is going to have that flimsy little plastic film that you peel off. That is not recyclable. All right, so the frozen food aisle, if it's there, it's single-use plastic. Even things that are cardboard, paper, have a plastic film and coating on top of it that now it's mixed of two materials, uh, a cardboard, a paper, and a plastic, but because they're together, it's non-recyclable. Now it's trash. Uh, you know, your detergents, your cleaners, uh, your toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenexes, all of it is wrapped in single-use plastics. Uh, you know, nuts, fruit, cereal, um, anything that's candy, anything that comes in single servings, the things that aren't even single servings, all of it is wrapped in plastic. Your produce even falls victim to single-use plastic. Okay, we can avoid the ubiquitous little plastic produce bag for large and bulk items, you know, like apples, grapefruit, uh, even celery and broccoli if you're me. But what about those tiny little food items that are consumed in bulk, you know, like your green, um, your green beans, your sweet peas, mushrooms, spinach or kale, you will have quite the disgruntled cashier if you do not back such items. And I tell you this from repeated experience. They do not like it. Okay, so you get it, right? Single-use plastic is a packaging material of choice for almost everything. Why is it a problem? Why should this concern you, right? Didn't I mention plastic? Or didn't I mention cancer? But what I forgot to mention was gas prices. So all petroleum products, or all plastics, are a petroleum byproduct, all right? Oil. So the exact same stuff that has been impudent to many a war that flies 747s literally around the world is also used to make flimsy, insignificant little items that we use for moments, and then it goes to the landfill to sit for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. In the United States alone, every single year, we use 17.4 million barrels of crude oil to produce single-use plastic bags alone. We're using another 17 million barrels of crude oil to produce soda bottles. Not the recycled ones, brand new ones coming right into market. So there are 33.4 gallons and a barrel of crude oil. So for the U.S.'s addiction to single-use plastic carryout bags and soda bottles alone, that's a whopping total of 1.2 billion gallons of crude oil. I am terrified to quantify the number for all single-use plastics. If we bring in the straws and the lids and the utensils and the wrappings and the ramekins, what is that number going to be? Extraordinary. 
So let's take a little venture into the life cycle of that single-use plastic bag, okay? So, I don't know, maybe a million years ago, atmospheric oxy oxygen levels were extremely low and carbon dioxide levels were extremely high. And this combination prohibited the natural transmission of carbon from um, dead plant and animal matter into the atmosphere and the soil. So basically what this means is that everything's made up of carbon, right? We all know that. Every, every living thing, plants and humans, are made up of carbon. And when you die, it goes through an oxidation process that is releasing all of that carbon back into the atmosphere. But if you have too much carbon in the atmosphere, that's not going to happen. And so now you have dead dinosaurs that lay their whole undecomposed, and then millions of years of sediment bury them under heat and pressure, and now you have oil. Um, let's get back to the plastic bag, okay? So fossil fuels are non-renewable, not so much because of the one million year time frame to produce the oil, but because we no longer have the atmospheric conditions to make fossil fuels. Once we have made the oil, we waited a million of years, let's get it out of the ground, right? So now we have pulled it out of the ground, we've refined it, Let's take it to a manufacturing facility, then a distribution facility, then to the grocery store. Then you, as the average American, are going to use it for about 12 minutes, and then it's going to go to the landfill to accumulate for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. But wait, Heather, you might tell me, I take my grocery bag, I take my grocery bags back to the grocery store and place them in those environmentally friendly plastic bag recycling bins. Okay. So now we're going to take it from that recycling bin back to a recycling facility where it's turned into a little plastic pellet, then to a manufacturing facility where it's going to turn into that flimsy little plastic material for the yogurt cup, you remember that? Uh, now it's going to a distribution center, then it's going to the grocery store, now it's back in your home where it's going to go to the trash can, and it's going to go to the landfill to accumulate for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. Okay. At every step of this extensive process of distribution and production, we're consuming enormous amounts of fuel to make this all happen. So my argument is, if we're using extreme amounts of fuel to take plastics out of the ground, just to put them back in the ground, why don't we save the fuel, forego plastics, and really begin talking about energy independence in the United States? I mentioned cancer, didn't I? Did I mention cancer? Okay, so plastics, they're petroleum, petroleum byproducts, we got that. But we also know that plastic comes every shape, size, texture, color, density, malleability, flexibility. So to do all of that, to take one product and to make it into all these variations, what we need is a ton of toxins that we pump in as part of the production cycle to make them that way. Uh, and there's a whole gamut, there's a whole list, and uh, they come up um, as means of all types of cancer and uh, liver disease and neurological defects and, you know, um, thyroid disruptors, thyroid receptor disruptors. There's, there's a whole mix of things, right? So we know about BPA. We hear about BPA all the time. But what we don't hear about is that BPA is not the only thing. There's a lot of other... Uh, toxins to be concerned about. And the fact that BPA has been used in plastic products for nearly 20 years and we're just now learning the environmental and the health effects from it, should we be concerned about some of the other toxins? What are we going to find out in the next 5 to 20 years? You know, and then there's benzene. Almost every single plastic has benzene in it. It's a known carcinogen. Uh, it's extremely volatile. It moves around easily in the environment. It gets into the human body and once it's there, it stays. It just accumulates. And so the World Health Organization cautions um, that the main means of absorption of BPA into the human body is through your diet. It's through the consumption of food and beverages that have been contaminated through the packaging material. And the United States Environmental Protection Agency estimates that over 90% of Americans have uh, extremely high quantities of BPA, high and dangerous quantities, in their body. So you guys get it? Single-use plastics are actually like a really big problem. What can you do? Bring your own bag. Bring your own cup and your utensils. I know it sounds like 
this really big task, right? Like, oh my gosh, carry one more thing. But as an individual who bikes to campus carrying a book bag, a gym bag, sometimes a laptop bag, and a purse, on a bicycle three miles one way in this dress and hills today, I tell you, you can carry a cup, right? So you get your reusable items. I'm not kidding you, I did. Uh, you get your reusable items and put them in your book bag. You're already carrying it. It's here on campus. If you need some water, if you need a soda, you've got a cup. Fill it up. When you get done, wash it, put it back in your bag. Carry another set in your car. You know, this isn't going to eliminate every single situation with which you're going to fall victim to needing a single-use plastics. They're everywhere. It's, you know, how we live. But what it can do is it can reduce your two-packs-a-day smoker status addiction to the smoker who only smokes when they drink and they only drink of occasion, addiction status. If you guys think that you have more willpower than the um, occasional smoker, put your money where your mouth is. Purchase products that are packaged in glass, paper, and aluminum. Support establishments that uh, use reusable diningware and that package their food in recyclable and compostable materials. Please know that this isn't just your addiction, okay? It's all of our addiction. The whole world, uh, every society, we live in this false world, right? We live in this plastic paradise. It's not true. We know this now, we understand it. We can't continue to produce uh, in this unlimited, unlimited, unlimited system, in this linear cycle where it's just more, 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 and we just throw it in the landfill, and Mother Earth, she's gonna take care of it. It's gonna go away. It's not the truth. Landfills are filling up and they're spilling over and they're leaching toxins into our water and our soil and our air and we have to deal with it. It's all of us, okay? So, do your part. Rise above plastics. Think, plan, try harder. Thank you.